congratulations on being Thank named you. HR Executive of the Year. I wanted to speak with you a little bit about um, how you manage such a large number of people. Recently brought in 150,000, that's, that's the size of a small town. How do you effectively get your message across and really connect? I think the most important thing that I keep in mind is uh, keeping the legacy of our founders uh, alive. And they put it simply, take care of the employees, they'll take care of the customers. And in essence, the business will take care of itself. So the whole focus has been on ensuring that for every single uh, person that works at Marriott, that we're genuinely concerned about their well-being and that if they find that value is being added to their life, they'll be vested in the success of the business. Seems like it's worked for you, right? So far, so good. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I also looked a little bit into your background. I saw that you were raised by uh, two immigrants. I wonder how that uh, experience informs you as you you know, just go through your world as an HR executive. No, that's a great question. Um, I, my parents were born in Puerto Rico. I was born here. I'm light-skinned um, and you know, had blonde hair as a youth, it turned dark over time. So to be honest, I never clearly fit into any one group. And I think that really helped me to, over time, form my understanding of what did it really mean to uh, promote inclusion? And you know, how do you embrace diversity and ensure that everyone feels a part of the community? And I, and I really feel my experiences growing up and not always fitting in uh, were instrumental in giving me a sensitivity to those issues. Are there things, is there anything in particular from your childhood or, or young adulthood that you can point to as a, you know, a specific incident that you think about regularly or? You know, I can remember instances where uh, there were assumptions made about me. Uh, either I clearly must have been this group or that group and you know, what was important about that is it really drilled in me the notion that what did it matter? What group I was a member of? And, and, and in many ways that informs, you know, how I approach inclusion at our company. My job is to make sure that everybody feels a part of one large group, uh, that we really understand, you know, how much more we have in common than not. And from that strength, you know, be better uh, prepared and, and to be sensitive to the great uh, differences in talents that we each bring. Great. Uh, a little bit on the lighter side, do you have a funny story that you, uh, from your, your days as HR, that you can talk about without being sued? Without being sued? Well, that's, <laughs> that puts it at a higher <laughs> hurdle level. Um, yeah, you know, when I became the head of HR at Marriott for the first time, I think the first week there was a snowstorm, a severe snowstorm, and I found out it was my responsibility to decide whether the building should be closed or not. <laughs> um, I quickly understood that you can never make everybody happy, no matter what decision you can make. And I got a lot of kidding about that because, you know, I, um, I used to joke, it's like, I just hope it doesn't snow this winter. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all your responsibilities, you have to control the weather too. Snow, yes. <laughs> um, and I think my last question here is, how do you handle your role? You're a busy executive, obviously, managing lots and lots of people. Um, but probably, I assume, trying to be a good example in terms of, you know, set a good example for how to manage a, your work-life balance, all that sort of stuff. I've always wondered how executives really manage to, to do that. No, it's a great question. And, you know, in my case, I'm actually a cancer survivor. I had leukemia six years ago and, and was cured. Um, and that sensitized me to the importance of making sure that you're running an organization where people can... Um, you know, have a great career, but, you know, attend to their full life and to live a productive and healthy life. And, and so we've done a lot at the company to help educate and, and to make it okay that uh, you, know, you should take your vacation time. And, you know, when it's time to go home to have dinner with the family, 
that's the most important thing that you should be uh, doing. And, and again, I got sensitized uh, to that through, through my own health challenges. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's been my a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you.